Welcome to the Canadian Cinematographers Roundtable. With me, I have four of the hottest Canadian cinematographers in the business today. We have to my left, Bobby Shore, uh, CSC, Maya Bankovic. Uh, we have over here, Scott McClellan, and Catherine Lutz, CSC. Uh, I'm glad that you could all make it. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. Uh, I'm also happy to see everyone got the memo to wear bright colored clothing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a Toronto thing or if that's a cinematographer thing. I think it's probably a DP thing. Yeah, yeah. we like to disappear yeah. a little bit. That's right. Yeah. 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 Exactly, yeah. I know that everyone's a little bit uncomfortable being on camera for a change. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really excited to, to talk to you guys about a whole bunch of things, but I always want to start with something light. And uh, one of the things that I think people forget when you have very successful uh, careers is that there was always stumbling blocks along the way. Uh, tell me, anybody want to share what their some biggest gaffes, biggest mistakes were in their career? I'm not sure if that's a light question to start with. No. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. My Any whole, sort of my, funny instances my, whole, my whole life is a stumble. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> exactly. I don't think that stuff is so like as consequential as people think mm. it is. I don't. I don't think. I think it's more yeah. like how you run your life. To me, at least. But, I, but, but really I think important. when it when it does happen, I think there's also I think when you're starting out too, I think you put a lot of stock in um, certain actions that you know ten years later you're like, oh well, that doesn't fucking matter at all. Like who cares, you know? True. But it, it matters. Like it seems like the world's gonna end because yeah. maybe you. You know, the, I remember the, getting like film back that was a car shot through the windshield and it came back and like it hadn't been polarized out so it was all just reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was yeah. like heartbroken. No, I know. Like, oh. and now like, I'm like, that looks awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. But like at the time yeah. it was like, it's oh true. my God, Your heart I thinking. destroyed this mm -hmm. shot. Yeah, but I think, but those, I think that's also important to kind of, um, at, at least after having more kind of like experience, like kind of differentiating between, I guess kind of like maybe more like, um, like I guess logistical mistakes, like you know you were starting out and you forgot to hit record on like a scene, versus you maybe took a risk and the film came back too dark, or the producer was like, I can't see their eyes. What's wrong with you? Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. I think at least that way yeah. there's maybe like a conscious effort, kind of, or, or like a, like an active decision. So there's yeah. a sense of agency mm -hmm. kind of behind it, versus just kind of like Oops. just kind of like yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, I, remember I forgot to bring lenses in like immediately top of day so they were like fogged because oh. it was winter yeah, yeah. and that kind of thing where it's like I should know this by now and like it ruining my day yeah because you know? yeah, yeah. I was like letting it weigh on me so much rather than just like you have to like be in the moment you can't let that stuff weigh on you but like yeah yeah in the early years I would let that stuff like affect my ego I think yeah a lot. totally yeah totally do you guys still get too married to the footage and you know where a director or producer may not see something particularly oh that looks great and you're inside dying a little bit does that still happen to you um yeah yeah, yeah. every day yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely but i guess yeah. it's, i don't know it's also such a subjective thing right like i don't know if it's the same for for all of you where you're kind of just like your own biggest critic and you look look at something and you're like this is garbage like why would anyone want to use this and like literally everyone else like they don't see the the mistakes you're mm -hmm. talking about mm -hmm. or what's wrong with mm -hmm. it you know mm -hmm. i kind of find i don't know if it's the same for you i'd be curious to get your take on it that kind of happens to me i find a lot in in color timing mm -hmm. where um i don't think there's enough of um a, a dialogue between kind of production director and the dp for what's supposed to happen in post in pre-production. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like you'll talk about a look and everything, but then you get to the color suite and all of a sudden, even though you've been referencing certain images or you expose things in a certain way, Everything. or you lit things in a certain way, just things can generally just be pushed in so many different directions mm -hmm. now. Um, so I don't know like if, mm -hmm. if your experience is like, like there's been times where I've looked at the direction, even like the director kind of changed their mind and that's, I mean, I want to say that's fine, but inside it's kind of yeah. Maybe mm. not. <laughs> but I find that the hardest too with like the, with commercials and short stuff, especially because yeah. usually with a feature or a longer project, you're a yeah. part of that, so you've like negotiated that you're yeah. going to be there. But like getting getting that stuff done without you there, it's, yeah, that's it's where like, I'm always heartbroken because yeah. yeah. I'm just like, that's what you but do. But yeah. <laughs> like it's weird because I so I just went through this experience. Like I shot this music video in the UK like a couple months ago. And uh, it, like, it was like a four-day music video. Like, a, they actually had a budget, which was awesome. It was for like a really good artist, and the director I'd worked with before, and it was really amazing. And we shot and exposed things to look a certain way. Yeah. And in the grade, he kind of just wanted to 
pump it up a little bit more and add more color and like I was just like I was looking at the footage like this is garbage it can't look like this you're ruining everything obviously said it I think a little bit more diplomatically <laughs> um, but then I showed it to a friend of mine who had no point of reference mm -hmm. as to what it was intended to look like and he was like this looks great what are you talking about yeah and I realized yeah. that it's like the, you 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 have these really strong opinions because you have a frame of reference do you know mm -hmm. what I mean totally stuff are just like you know, old lenses versus new lenses and like resolution versus just yeah. kind of like fucked up image quality and stuff. And it's like, yeah, an old lens looks like an old lens only when it's next to a master prime. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. if it's you're, all if, you, if, if Yeah, yeah. it's all context, right? Yeah. So if you're frame, if you have no frame of reference and yeah. Yeah. all you see is this one yeah. thing, it's like it doesn't matter that it doesn't resolve it because it still looks fine. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So I guess like, do you ever, do you ever get into that when you look at your like short form projects or any project yeah. where... I find like it's like, normally we're not so far off base from what we talked about yeah. on the stuff I've been on. But just like in, in, in color, I like to be just as open-minded about where we can take it. Yeah. And usually it's somewhere, it's within the range of what we've talked yeah. about. It's not like they're suddenly like trying to do a bleach bypass and we we like production design and lit it to be yeah. something kind of yeah, subdued yeah. or something, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like within the wheelhouse of what we talked about, but I like to, you know, see, like at least, I, I like options, so I like to like be open-minded like that yeah. because you do get that occasional moment where you're like, oh no, it's that like is actually really awesome. It's not what I yeah. thought, but yeah. like that's but also better. cool. Yeah. yeah. I, I find know. it's hard to sell that sometimes too, though, if uh, you work in a lot or you work in a certain look and then you do something drastically different later, it seems like everybody's so used to seeing the footage in a certain way for so yeah. long, yeah. as soon as you depart from that, everybody sort of freaks out. It's yeah. like, you know, it's just so different than what we're used to. They kind of get so but I, comfortable but I guess, with that But look. I guess that's also, I think, why it's like, I mean, I hate the idea of like, I, maybe I'm just uh, haven't figured out a way to wrap my brain around it, but like, kind of like being on set and you know doing live grading or mm -hmm. sitting in a tent mm -hmm. and riding the iris and like not being close to the actors or like the director. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I just I like that idea of like set the look on set through like lighting and lenses yeah. and just use like one really simple LUT and just try yeah. to get it as close as possible. Yeah. 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 Totally. Of, like, Do you guys use a lot of LUTs on set or in your no, camera? No, I just use like the for when I shoot Alexa, just like the low contrast curve. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty much it. Yeah. I try, I do try to get it a little bit close because um, on set for me, because of this phenomenon of like directors and editors and producers Changing. getting very oh, yeah. like falling in love with what they're editing mm -hmm. and then not being able to like deviate too far yeah. from yeah. that. Yeah. So I, and, and it happens a lot in, because I, I do a lot of documentaries too, and often they're, sh they're uh, cutting just like a raw flat image because there's mm -hmm. no LUT, there's no like real post happening on it until later. And then they don't want to like add any contrast They're whatsoever. And flat, then the whole this yeah. documentary is looking like a music video <laughs> <laughs> years ago. And like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, sounds great. So <laughs> I know there's this phenomenon of people just falling in love with what they're editing. So for, I, sure. like, for me, I, I try to um, encourage them to use it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to sort of switch gears a little bit and just focus on uh, all of us, of course, being Canadians and working in Canada. Uh, you've chosen to stay in Canada. You know, obviously, you travel, uh, and some of you go back and forth between Los Angeles and, and here. Um, but let's talk about, uh, and if you can share your ideas about why you've chosen to stay in Canada and the sort of the state of the Canadian film industry and why it's, it's important to you and why you stay here. We could talk about this all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't know, I don't know. I always go a little bit back and forth because uh, there's a, you know, obviously other markets in the U.S. have a lot more just being created. So there's more options. There's more stuff that might be the kind of story that you want to tell. Where in Canada, because we're a little bit smaller, there's a limited amount of projects. Like I find there's a limited amount of projects that I'm really excited about. And that doesn't even mean that I'm necessarily going to get those projects. So there, the ob the like idea of having more is there, but I feel a little torn. Like I don't want to fully turn my back on Canada and get out, like scram the second I can, because I think there are really amazing filmmakers, and it's like nice yeah. to keep growing but this and see all it. All amazing growing. filmmakers are coming out of Quebec, though. I think it's very true. Yeah, I mean, I know, it's weird. Like I know we spoke about this a, a bunch because it's kind of like a loaded question, right? Where it's like it's very easy to criticize a system that gives you money to make shit. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. obviously there's inherent, I think, flaws in that system. For me, the biggest one kind of seeming, well, two of them. One, I think, needing a certain amount of Canadian actors because you're not yeah. doing yourself any favors by 
kind of potentially limiting what you could do from a marketing standpoint to get a movie out there. And secondly, and I think this is the biggest one, is like the fact that you have to have a distributor on board before you even get the funding means there's zero incentive to push a movie once it's, once it's done. Mm -hmm. So like every fucking Canadian movie that gets made, dies. it goes in the theater for one week and then dies on Air Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's like, and it's just, it, it's pretty, I mean, it's just, it's kind of, it, it sucks, do you know what I mean? Because yeah. there, there actually is a lot of well-made movies out there. And, and I think because Quebec works uh, in, in, in its own kind of microcosm and can also sell its movies to France and Europe mm -hmm. and all that stuff, they're not beholden to that kind of, um, that setup at all, do you know what I mean? Like, you never really ever see a Quebec film promoted outside of Quebec, yet they still have a system where it feels a little bit more auteur-driven, yes. you know what I mean? It feels a little bit more story-driven, and um, the system is set up to kind of, I think, create films, and not mm -hmm. create Canadian films, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah. So I don't know, it's, 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 but it's again, it's also, it's like they're paying their salaries yeah. too, do you know what I mean? So yeah. they get hired be government subsidies. Well, that's the thing stuff, here, is like you find these really amazing, inspiring projects that are micro-budget projects. Yeah. Where yeah. you're literally making zero yeah. dollars, yeah, yeah, yeah. or like just enough to pay your rent. Yeah. And, or you're you know, begging, like. you're begging your crew to work for 75 <laughs> bucks a day. Yeah, like, yeah, that's crazy, yeah. but yeah. But you are seeing films being greenlit, yeah, by government dollars and subsidies and stuff that wouldn't stand a chance in a more capitalist driven, like um, return on investment driven right. kind of model like the way it is in the US, I think. So there's a part of me that really deeply respects yeah, that. Completely, yeah, completely. Mm -hmm. But it's but it's weird because it's like you look at like like the like the lottery fund in like the UK, it's like the films that are coming out of there are like mm. phenomenal. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. like they're kind of working in a similar system. I guess obviously they're doing something different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what about commercial work or music video work? Uh, is there a Canadian slant to it that's been beneficial for you or a unique experience? Did you all did you all did you all start out like doing commercials and music videos then features or was it kind commercials of commercials are a new thing for me and yeah. it's rare still I yeah. do like a couple a year. It's, but it's, but it's so weird, right? Where it's like, oh, you're not a commercial DP because you haven't shot a commercial yet. Yeah, and you're like, mm -hmm. I've done like eight features. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but they don't. Look, they would never look at yeah. a feature as a as, yeah. thing. Yeah. And and that's always an interesting question for a lot of especially emerging filmmakers who are looking at doing both commercial work and narrative work is the fear as all freelancers that once you sign on to a feature. Uh, people in the commercial world forget about you um, and you get pigeonholed or you're doing yeah. commercials and then if you leave the commercials you know sort of vice versa and all those sort of things. Do you worry about that at all in terms of career management? Yeah, a little bit. I've always found it a weird thing. When I first started out people would always ask me like what kind of DP do you want to be? Do you want to be a commercial DP or a feature DP? And I never yeah. really thought of it as being one or the either, one or the other. I always just thought you know I want to be a DP and I just want to shoot yeah. whatever I can you know. <laughs> um, but it's good. I've got a couple of good relationships with some agencies here in the city, and I try and maintain those relationships. They're very good people, and they're becoming friends, and I think that, that helps a lot. So when they hear I go away on a feature for a while, um, they say, oh, okay, well, you know, uh, I'll touch base with you again in a month or two months, whatever it is, and we'll see if we can find some stuff. So that's always worked out very well for me yeah. in that way, which is good. But uh, yeah, I certainly don't want to be just a feature mm -hmm. DP or just a commercial DP or doctor, whatever. I mean, do you, but do you, do you have a preference, though? Like, I mean, no, like, I is. Mean, not like really. it's, it's like there's like I don't know like storytelling and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, it, it completely like, changes from project to project. Yeah. I think like sometimes I love doing commercials because it's a fast turnaround. You're, it's all you know. There's often a lot more money um, that you have to work with with commercials, which is great. Yeah. But then doing features, you know, I think that the work that you do is more in, inspired somehow. It's there's more uh, behind it. You're making decisions based on uh, the story and the yeah. emotion of characters, and I think that that's uh, so much better in terms of being a cinematographer. Yeah. It's like making those decisions is kind of what it's all about in a way. So it's important to do those, <laughs> and then I guess commercials just kind of keep you alive in between. <laughs> well, I mean, they, they also it's a good way to subsidize kind of like exactly. low budget art projects. That's right. Or yeah. Exactly. That's what I mean. Indie features yeah. or yeah. not working and reading a book yeah. under a tree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think it's like for me at least, it's like keeping a like a little bit of like a finger in the different pies based on what I want or need my life to be do the rest of my life to be doing in that moment. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's all it's like it's creatively driven, but it's also like how does this fit into what I'm trying to do in general right now. And your work is really balanced between uh, narrative features and doc features and or documentary mm -hmm. uh, projects. Do you have a, a stint where you'll be doing docs and you're like, oh man, I really want to get back on narrative, like or, and vice versa? Or do you just the projects just come as they come and you you take what? Yeah, they come as they come for me, and it's like, is this a good time? Am I ready for like an, an adventure right now? This documentary is more will like likely to take me on like some cool, more enriching experience, versus like you know 
is this like a careerist move to stay and do this like weird second unit job because whatever on a narrative, or, you know, or an indie feature? I don't know. So it's I don't know. I think a I'm lot about like where to, to like, fit in. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm trying not to like make those rules for myself right mm -hmm. now. Just go with the like what feels right yeah. right now. And you know, I had to. I did sort of consciously make a choice a couple years ago to not do longer format and I was just doing commercials and short stuff and yeah. then after doing that for like a year and a half I was like okay, was like, okay I need done. long yeah. I need to yeah, like yeah. sink my teeth into something so <laughs> I'm happy to just like go with that yeah so whatever feels like the right thing at the right time yeah. and obviously you don't want to burn out and, and you all work very exhausting schedules but uh, presumably you want to do projects that are for you that are art driven projects that are uh, indies that maybe pay little or nothing or you even paying to be part of something uh, how do you schedule that into your year how do you find the time to not burn out but do those projects that mean potentially more personally to you I don't know. I, mean, I don't know if it's the same for you, but it's like no matter how tired or burnt out I am, if I'm enthusiastic about something, you just find the kind of energy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I also find kind of the the older I get, the less patience I have to work on shit I don't care about anymore. Mm -hmm. Which obviously you still need to you know pay your bills and and all that stuff. But there's something really nice about making a conscious effort to wait for projects that you can feel enthusiastic about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you also, have to actually remind yourself of that. Yeah. Like, or just or wait, also, you yeah. know, I think one thing that's interesting too, it's like there's, I think there's always a lot of talk behind <clears throat> um, indie projects that mean a lot to you. But there's also, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but it's like I have such a fucking appreciation for like Michael Bay movies, like <laughs> giant blockbusters. And it's like, <laughs> you know, to work on big budget stuff, is like that in itself, for me at least, was kind of like a, 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 a goal that I was able to achieve. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's kind and of, probably it's, waiting for the right one. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. it's like yeah. it's but it's like it's fun sometimes to like be on set. Yeah. They oh yeah. Shit around. yeah. And you're just like people are listening to me. <laughs> Why? That's yeah. so weird. Uh, it's right? a heavy resource. Yeah, yeah it's man. Like, it's like it's it's fun. It's like it's like I remember uh, just like <clears throat> doing shorts and spending like two weeks trying to figure out how to get like a camera move on the budget that we have yeah. and this and that <laughs> and like the idea that you can just like pull stuff out of the truck. Yeah. You're just like oh no, don't worry, we got you. It's cool. It's really about for me, it's been a process of like learning how to use my imagination again in a way because I'm so used to having to plan that stuff so far in advance on like limited resources and now having the resources, yeah. it's like opening up your mind again and saying like you can do it. You yeah. have it at your disposal to do it. Yeah. It doesn't have to like... And I guess, and and I guess also work, working, working, yeah. with the, working with people that enjoy that process yeah. of, of work as well, you know? Totally. And I know, Scott, um, you said at the, the start of this part of the discussion that uh, people had asked you, what kind of DP do you want to be? And you never really thought about it. And that reminds me of uh, one of your blog posts on your site where you talked about uh, Wait, you have choosing... a blog? She has a blog. Oh, really? It's oh. quite good. Wait, what's the blog? <laughs> Come on, plug um... it. <laughs> I think it's just my name is at it? WordPress, yeah. yeah. I honestly don't remember else. Really? Can you, can you text it to me though? Yeah, I will. Okay. Awesome. Uh, you <laughs> talked you. about choosing the right projects because that sets the tone for your career. Yeah. You careful okay. about that. So uh, from the early part of your career to now, how has that process evolved or changed? Have, do you still think about choosing the right projects because that might mean something for next year that's different? Yeah, uh, because it's about like being happy right now, you know, and working with people that I mesh with right now. Like I don't really understand why there's so many stories about DPs and directors fighting and producers fighting. Mm -hmm. To me that's like so foreign and maybe that means my career won't like accelerate in a certain way, but I'm never, I'm just trying to protect myself from getting jaded about the whole thing because I, I know myself and I can burn out real easily and I might walk away from a, a beautiful profession like this one if if I have too many like really nasty experiences. Yeah. So I, I don't want to lose but that's that good. magic. That's, almost, but that's, that's, that's not know? the norm, though, man. I think people don't put enough thought and consideration into how they're made to feel with the work they do. Mm -hmm. And we're all fucking lucky enough that we work in a, a, an industry that we actually love. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's the same for you, but it's like I get just as much satisfaction working on a music video that costs me $1,000 yeah. to pay the crew properly mm -hmm. yeah. as working on like a $10 million like yeah. feature. It's two very, it's like the two sides of the same coin. You know At what the mean? end of the day, you I, still like made this thing. Yeah, you made this thing mm -hmm. and it's like, and ultimately you really just want to kind of work with really kind and supportive yeah. people. It's and about just keeping yourself going. Yeah. And if you're constantly going home like pissed off and like, mm. and upset about yeah. stuff, I, I personally wouldn't stay in it. Yeah, sure. But I think, I don't know, I think that speaks to a, I think a, a, um, a certain level of, I think, mental character, though. Do you know what I mean? Because I think, mm. a, I mean, myself, like, I don't know if I'd be able to, I think I'd just mm. be like, oh, well, I'll deal with it, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, why? I'm curious. Well, no, but, it, yeah, but, you know, it's like, hey, me five years ago, yeah. I'll, I'll just deal with it because 
I want to work in this industry. I want to be successful. There's certain places I'm striving to get towards. Yeah, and, it's, and, it's only, it. it's only, and it's only been in the last couple of years. A lot of it actually had to do with like my dad got pretty sick a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was kind of like a, it was like a good kick in the ass to kind of like, wait, why am I saying yes to, you know, Goon 2 yeah. when I'm not really actually that interested in shooting it? Do you know what I mean? Right. I was like, wait, but why don't I just take time for myself? Why don't I spend yeah. time with my family? Why don't I shoot my best friend's sub million dollar indie drama for 16 days that yeah. is going to give me like this feeling that I'm going to carry with me for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Totally, because you know I mean? there's so many sacrifices. Yeah. And like, like, you know, I, we're all in dangerous situations, no matter how careful we're trying to be. It's a, it's a pretty dangerous profession. Yeah. And especially when you're in the documentary world too. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there are moments where I'm like, okay, if I'm going to fall off this cliff right now, walking backwards, <laughs> <laughs> like I better like this. <laughs> but I think that that's, that's so sort hilarious. of a privilege that comes with us. Uh, and all of us have been working for a number of years and have like probably taken a lot of jobs or have not but like have slugged it out so that yeah. now we are in a place that we are able to make some of those decisions a little bit easier. I think like years ago, I mean maybe I, I, I feel like when I was there was no money involved. I still was making the decisions based like solely on creative and yeah. what I wanted to mm -hmm. but it takes a while to be in that place and be like in a professional manner yeah. Yeah, and yeah. making money, you know. And uh, speaking of sort of picking projects, we're in a particular space right now that is moving away from the traditional uh, content creation uh, and the democratization of the technology in YouTube. This video will be on YouTube, it will be on Facebook, uh, and there's a growing amount of content that is being created solely for those digital channels, and there are cinematographers as well that are taking the reins and starting their own channels and sharing their information. How has the the um, creation of that new digital space affected your career choices and decisions? Has it changed at all? Do you think about being active in those spaces? Yeah, I just want like young 20 year old kids to think I'm working on cool shit. <laughs> <laughs> I do it for the kids. Yeah, I do it for the, do it for the kids. <laughs> no, but, it's, but it's, it's, I mean, I think it's kind of, it's kind of true though. There's, there's, like, there's like a whole, I think, kind of like aesthetic that's developed out of like. Kind well, of like Instagram. Like is Instagram crazy. and Vimeo, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. like. And there's, I think, to a certain extent, a, a certain kind of like homogeneity to like the look of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that has everything to do with platforms that are showcasing, you know, fashion films, art films, music videos. Like, there's just things that are kind of have like an inherently kind of like cool factor to them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And I guess maybe because I'm a person of low moral character, I want to be a part of that. I want to be, I want to be a part of that. I'm like, oh, I want to be fucking cool. You know, no, you know, but you know what I mean? Where it's like, because I think it's very easy to kind of get like seduced by that. But it's also, yeah. I guess there's also a lot of great content yeah. on there. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of liberating too. I, I mean, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to all of you if it weren't for the new technology and the internet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I wouldn't have a career at all. But <laughs> So I can't ever like be like, you know, who are all these clowns thinking that they can do what I do? It's like, yeah. I'm all, we're all kind of part of it but yeah. <laughs> but on the it's like really liberating too for that but also because and this kind of maybe is like a bummer to say but you realize sort of how um these things kind of come and go like I'll do a music video and it amounts to like a couple tweets and it's kind of yeah. gone yeah it feels yeah. very disposable so the it's true are yeah. somehow it's a bit lower and yeah. so yeah. but it frees you up I think a little yeah yeah and uh, on the context of technology, um, there is a continuing and growing race for resolution uh, in, in that type of thing. <laughs> do, you, do you buy into this? I mean, no, I'm, no. I'm always reminded that some of the best photographs uh, in history uh, are blurry, yeah. you know, and these types of things. Definitely. Um, no, it's a, it's a cash grab it marketing is. It seems like the, the TV yeah, companies, like, I think, are the ones that are really pushing it. Netflix, which is it's Netflix, Netflix, right? Netflix it's like, the fact that it's just, it's just so but, frustrating that you have, like, Netflix basically um, kind of like creating a space where they get to dictate mm -hmm. how you shoot something. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and even that, it's like, it, again, it just strictly comes down to like marketing, marketing, where it's like the Netflix show I just did, it's like we ended up having to shoot on a camera that had, could capture 4K. Um, and so that they could just, just so the literally, 4K. so they could just yeah. say 4K future proof. And here's the thing that's fucked up is it's like the, the producer was telling me she mistakenly sent in a budget that had like an Alexa 
it, like in, in like as a line item, and that she literally she said within three minutes of sending the budget, she got a call. Oh, you can't shoot on Alexa, it doesn't yeah. shoot four K. No, and it was website. literally she just forgot to change it from Alexa to Vericam. And but and the thing that's so messed up about it is. Um, we didn't even shoot 4K because of the specs we shot with the cameras, like 3.7 something something, yeah. yet they didn't say anything. Um, there's a really good DP named Andre Perec who shot 13 Reasons Why, and he had worked with the pilot director, Nikki Caro, who did Anne right before I worked with her, so I called him just to be like, how do I not fuck this up? You know what I mean? Like, what do I do to kind of like, you know, make sure that she's happy with like the work I'm doing? And on 13 Reasons Why, he shot spherical and anamorphic, but when you're, he was shooting anamorphic on a camera that once you actually de-squeeze the image was like 2K, 2.5, <laughs> and no one at Netflix said anything because it was just a camera that said Varicam 4K. You, you know might, what as, I mean? we might as well print, print labels. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, 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 yeah seriously. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> do, do a lot of that online speak uh, in terms of the reviews and, and camera tests and lenses, do that bother you at all? Because my understanding is, you know, once it gets compressed a million times and it's shown on, you can't really judge a camera by the footage that you see online. Uh, I don't, I don't know, man. I think you, you kind of can. Yeah. I think, yeah. Even yeah, when it's like tests. all down res yeah, and like no, but streaming also, but, quality. But, it's like but then it's relative. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. we get yeah. used to yeah. seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, but I still think all that, all that stuff, well, okay, so here's the thing. I think all that stuff, it still has an inherent, um, I guess, kind of like feeling to it. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you look at like, do you ever watch like lens tests on like Vimeo or like, Mm -hmm. yeah, all the time. yeah, but it's like you can actually you notice a difference between yeah, kind of like true. a B series and a G series you're kind of morphic, still comparing right? Within because you, the you, platform yeah, because you have again you have that point, point of reference, reference. right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think I think I think you you can kind of feel a difference, mm -hmm. but I think where that's I think best kind of exemplified is when you're watching something on the big screen. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, in terms of the technology, one of the things that's also available to us now that wasn't before uh, was being able to do uh, the DI and, and post-processing at home. So anybody with a laptop uh, and can get a free version of Resolve and learn color grading. Mm -hmm. um, how much, <laughs> nice. Excuse yeah, no, 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 I'm leaving that in. <laughs> I'm leaving that in. <laughs> Classy, right? Um, no one knows it's actually daytime outside. That's right. It's, right. it's the beauty of working in the studio. <laughs> um, how many of you have uh, embraced that and taught yourself uh, color grading and now give notes even in pre-production? Do you know stills and s send those off? And I think it's a good way to so, you know be sure that you can make LUTs that you like. It's a good way to do that. It's a good way to just sort of know the parameters of the footage that you're shooting. Everything's in log or raw now. And you can take that when you're re recording it. You know sort of what the limits are, what you can do with it, and what you can't do with it. I did a, a picture last year um, with two operators. Connor Fisher, who's a colorist at Alter Ego, was one of the operators. And it was amazing having him there for the duration. Because any time I'd worry about things going too dark or things being too muddy, I'd just say to Connor, I'd say, hey, are we good on this? You know, And he'd be like, oh, yeah, don't worry. We can pull this out, or we can do this, or we can do that. So it really was like a good. Um, just you know, it's good for your frame of mind when you're doing stuff. Do you, you know. do you do you all work pretty closely with your with your DIT on set in terms of like when you're done your shoot day on like a TV show or feature or commercial or whatever, and like just go and hang out with them for like an hour and like look at all the footage and make it sure. Depends. They, yeah. Yeah. Only if I'm worried about a scene. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I try to do it on commercial stuff actually the most because they are not going to invite me to that. No, I know. Yeah. 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 So you sure want to give them that. the thing and that they're going to get attached to that while they're editing, right. and then hopefully they'll go with that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I guess doing like super micro budget stuff, like I just came up with a micro budget feature where we did not really have a DIT. We had someone just like yeah, capturing just the just footage. Like and I, because I wanted to go with like a very specific look, this was the first time I developed LUTs and like oh, no in way. the menu had like seven LUTs that I would be like choose per scene. Yeah. So that because they're micro budget and they're not gonna have time to do stuff in post until we get to that like very small window, mm -hmm. yeah. there's gonna already be that what look were, that what, we can What were the LUTs you had set up? I'm, I'm just really curious because yeah. like I never use them. I like, I just like the idea of like, there's, I, for me I feel like there's way too many variables already yeah. happening on set. Right. Um, so just, you know, I, I like the idea of like just take one LUT and then if you want things to look a certain way, just do it all with lenses and lighting. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. fix all the mistakes. In post. It was <laughs> weird. Like sometimes I would turn off the LUT and be like, Good whoa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool yeah. yeah. And man. the false colors too. Like some of, sometimes the, the, um, 
the raw, like anything high, like anything overexposed was red, and actually in my LUD it was not. Oh, that's interesting. And I was like, what? Yeah, what did weird. I do? Yeah. Like, I'm yeah. trying to still how, understand how the science of it. How were you with the yeah, curve? Was weird. it like, were you doing like bleach bypass looks or and stuff? Like or was it like... just like bringing the highlight way It was down? like, yeah, it was bringing the highlight down, but it was like pushing in a lot of other contrast into yeah. the other, into the darks and and. Yeah, that's why I do think LUDs are important, because you have to know what kind of contrast you're aiming for mm -hmm. later. I, I yeah. flip them on and off constantly. Yeah, yeah, check your ratios. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. you're dealing with like basically like thinking about compression in a way because you're like dealing with like a, yeah. the range. I was super mm -hmm. happy with this because I basically had like um, Andrew Salky actually. Oh really? Yeah, he came and he like developed a, a look hair. for me and then <laughs> and then I would email him because I couldn't afford to have him on set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd email him a couple pictures and just be like, can you? This is all too cool for what we're doing. Can yeah. you just add a little bit of warmth or whatever? Awesome. And then I'd load that back in the next day and have like a new cool. option in my yeah. LUT choices. Mm -hmm. So it was cool. Yeah, it's a weird, I'll see what happens in post because I'm sure there's so a cool. few decisions where like one of the LUTs was this insane like harsh outside look where yeah. everything was like contrasty and the, and the whites were just like ah. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the other stuff inside I ended up kind of like toning it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah so there'll definitely be still the the color correction session where I'm like, ooh, like, have you know, to blend these one. things together. It's so interesting more. to have so many different ones for yeah. a project, yeah. but they they feel cohesive though. Or? I think yeah. so. I think there will be like I a feel, couple bumps like where it has I feel like to. I've heard of blend, that before, but, where people will have like a LUT for day exterior, like like a LUT for night yeah. exterior, for sure. or day interior, night interior, mm -hmm. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, mm -hmm. Even I really enjoyed day. it. Yeah. I really yeah. like yeah. loved the process of it because it was such a weird, different thing too. And I was trying something different in the lighting style, so it was a nice thing to like. This is what it's going to yeah. look like. And I find it helpful too for, for makeup if it's something where you're going a oh. little off. Oh god, yeah, yeah for them because, to be able to see it on set. Yeah, totally, yeah. because yeah. what they thought was like a pink lipstick is suddenly a little bit purple. Yeah, that's right. You know, so yeah. I find it helpful to look at that stuff. And you know, you obviously this is another element to your career where you can be really hands-on, you can really uh, have your voice, and when everyone's starting their career off, then they're being a DP means that you're also operating, and you're getting to a point in your careers where you're probably not operating as much, and you're standing behind a monitor. Oh. Um, does that happen for you guys right now? Well, only on the unions. Yeah, I love operating still exactly. for yeah. sure. It's like, yeah, yeah, try and do it as much as I can mm -hmm. for sure. Although I do have to say, there's it, being able to sit literally right next to the director, mm -hmm. and especially because like, I mean, television's like, it's always two cameras, right? Mm -hmm. And be able to kind of just like oversee everything, I think. And plan um, ahead. Yeah. And plan ahead, I think it counts for a lot, especially when you have a very good relationship with that director, and they, you know, for me, I think the most important thing that should happen af the second after someone calls cut is you make eye contact with the director. Mm -hmm. And I think that needs to happen because it's establishing do we get this? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do we not get this? And 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 you, they should be the first person that you're you're speaking to. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I think that sometimes having that ability to take a step back and just watch what's happening on both mm -hmm. cameras, and more than just from a technical so standpoint, I think from like a performance yeah. standpoint, I think a lot of the times, um, I think kind of like DPs kind of maybe pay too much attention to technical shit mm -hmm. and not enough attention to. Uh, whether or not something felt right yeah. or mm -hmm. the camera move was right or, or all that stuff. You know, I'm sure you yeah. guys obviously yeah. think about that all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's like being able to just like go up to your opera and be like, get the fuck out of here. I don't <laughs> <laughs> grab, the, grab, grab the camera. It's like, it's so yeah. like, it's, I don't know. I mean, do you, do you, I mean, I find for me, it's like, I'm actually a really shitty operator, except for handheld. It's the only thing I can do. That's the only time I'm jealous of yeah. all of my operators. It's like, but, oh, but, I also, but, I also, but I also find, I also find in that way, I almost find it's like almost more important sometimes to be holding the camera because it's. Mm -hmm. It's so it's small. It's like yeah. this True. shit yeah. 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 is so yeah. different. I, 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 obviously, sure. obviously there's, there's amazing operators that I'm sure we've all worked with, but I, I like this idea of like operating for lighting. Do you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Where yeah. it's like, wherever the actor is, if you move like, like you said, two inches this way, the yeah. lighting changes, yeah. the whole mm -hmm. frame changes, yeah. you know Definitely. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's like, you know, hopefully you have an operator that yeah. is in line Thinks like a filmmaker yeah. too. Yeah, 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 like yeah. It's very important that they think like filmmakers yeah. and cinematographers for sure. It was funny, do you guys know Mike Heathcote? You know Mike yeah. Heathcote? So he was working on Handmaid's Tale and he's, he, so good. he's fucking great, but he yeah. was just like, um, both him and the DP would kind of like switch between operating handheld sometimes, but when Reed Morano was directing the first three episodes, he said she would grab the camera and do like 25 minute long handheld takes, wow. and they were just at the margin be like, wow, oh, fuck, she's so much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think crazy. there's like a it's level like, of like emotion and investment maybe that you yeah. bring when you're the DP. Yeah, that totally. Like, and, and there are for sure, there are operators that feel invested, like yeah. don't get me wrong, but like mm -hmm. there is like, you're, you're connected to the project from the beginning, you're there for 
more, maybe other reasons from the beginning too. So mm -hmm. like that shows in the operating, I feel yeah. like. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm trying to mentally like put change gears in my head right now because I just did this micro budget that was entirely handheld, like all long takes where oh. the rest of the crew would be like, so what's the coverage? And we'd be mm -hmm. like, well, we kind of know what the coverage is, but just everybody stand back. Yeah, I'm going like, to feel we'll this. Yeah. I'm feeling yeah. everything yeah. and yeah. I'm like part really of this. And it was so amazing. Don't and now you? I'm going on to a TV series where yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to sit behind where the it's monitors. Like wide over, wide it's like quality yeah. control yeah. kind of stuff. It's yeah. like, yeah. like a different But you know what's, but the thing, I don't know, the thing that's fucked up is it's like, it doesn't like, it's so frustrating because like like television doesn't have to be like that. No. Do you know what I mean? No. And it's like like exactly what, what you're saying and like that 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 I don't know that sense of kind of being energized that you get from like oh my god you don't know what the coverage is but you know exactly how you should shoot it yeah. mm -hmm. because you understand what the scene's about. Yeah. You know what I mean it's like you can I get that. everywhere that it's coming from emotionally yeah. where it has to go with the like feeling. You can, is. you can do that in any whether it's a feature, whether it's TV, it's just like you just need the, the yeah. people to support that. Totally, kind of approach, and you have you know to hire I mean? with that and, in and mind also, and too. also, I think um, you know, obviously, like the, the content should support yeah. that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. If you're doing like just like I think a, a straight up comedy, I think doing all handheld, that's just kind of like <laughs> no coverage, no. whatever. Is maybe, maybe it would work. <laughs> maybe it would. Who knows? And, yeah. and do you guys worry about uh, with handheld and everyone's using a lot of colored gels now? Um, there's a talk I, I find online. A lot of people are saying that there's something to be said for the traditional approach and keeping your filmmaking, keeping your shots traditional on a dolly and keeping them still. And Because if we look back for 10 years in the future, we're looking back 10 years like, man, everything was shaky cam, you know? <laughs> Do you worry about uh, sticking with a particular technique and worrying about it being dated? Or it's just got to be for the project. Exactly. Yeah. For yeah. me, like this thing I just did was, it, so much of it was about that handheld and that like energy. But I feel like I've done features and stuff that I want it to look formal, and that formal approach really brings something to it. So mm -hmm. yeah. I just don't like being stuck in the one thing of like everything I do is going to be. But do you? But do you yeah. think that? I mean, we spoke about this at the tip thing last year yeah. about like how you know there's kind of like a, a an aesthetic zeitgeist almost. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like I look at the stuff I was shooting in like the early 2000s, where we were talking about everything being kind of like skip bleach, push process, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I kind of find. I would like read a script and be like, oh, we should skip bleach it. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you're just like, that's, that's what's fucking thing. happening. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And so I always kind of like wonder, like, well, is this whole naturalistic thing that like that is, I guess, not mm -hmm. in now because mm -hmm. it's obviously been in forever. But mm -hmm. like, but it's like people for, are embracing it. Though. But, but embracing it, do you know what I mean? And I just kind of like, well, that's what I want to apply to this because that's what I actually just like yeah. right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I I can't see any situation where I'd read a skip and be like, oh yeah, cross process and reversal. <laughs> like, I, I, just actually, yeah. I don't just, see those kinds of looks when I read a script. Yeah, right no, no, I know. That, that, but but, but, but if it's like when you think about like, like all of Spike Lee's yeah. movies, like even like, like Inside Man or whatever, where it's like all the kind of interrogation stuff was mm -hmm. cross process reversal and he did mm -hmm. the same thing in Clockers with Malik Saeed, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and you just kind of like wonder, it's like, okay, so how much of that is relevant to uh, a specific time period and how that specific time period is influencing yep. people's just general aesthetic, like even the clothes. Definitely, and like the low contrast, low saturation yeah, thing. Yeah, like yeah. even now, I'm just like, oh man, I went too far. Yeah, yeah, into no, that. I, know, I gotta right? like get out. I think it's like anything, like in life, you have to just be constantly checking yourself. Like, yeah, am I doing sure. this because it's cool? Is this my ego talking, or is this well, like this actually cool. just? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you guys get uh, your inspiration from? Photography, I know, because you've had a career uh, as a photographer. Oh, as did you well. really? A little what bit, kind, yeah. Kind of well, I started. I started out shooting photos. I, it's kind of a bit of a story, really. But uh, yeah, get into it, man. <laughs> yeah. get there. I when I graduated from university, I was doing a lot of uh, skateboard stuff. I was skateboarding, and I was art directing for a skateboard company and shooting skate photos. And I wanted to be DPing, and that's kind of the direction that I wanted to be going. And I wasn't. So I had all this camera equipment and I had all this lighting equipment, it was mostly flashes and that kind of thing. And I said, what can I do with just this stuff that I can uh, push myself forward as a DP with? So I started just making um, photographs that were like very cinematic. I was lighting them as cinematically as I kind of liked, I guess, or yeah. could. And, and were you the shooting digital or things. film? It was digital, okay. uh, yeah, because uh, that's what I had. Yeah. Um, They're really nice. No, thank you. Oh, <laughs> thanks. Do you have a blog also? Uh, <laughs> it's on my website, I guess, yeah. Get with it, start a blog. <laughs> I know, right, yeah. Um, so that was kind of like that was a way for me to show people that I was able to like light cinematically and, and sort of had those um, 
uh, had that ability. So uh, from there, I ended up getting an agent for photography. And oh, it was okay. a very short stint, though. Yeah, I was yeah. like, this isn't what I want to do. This was really just a vehicle to get me to where I want to be. Yeah. And uh, I think it worked a lot, which was good. And it's always been like a nice fallback. Like I don't do it as much as I used to just because I don't have the time because I'm always shooting stuff now. But at the same time, it's like when I think about doing projects that don't really aren't exactly what I want to be doing or something that's like very much somebody else's vision that you kind of have to uh, uh, create for them I always have this uh, photographic element in my back pocket mm -hmm. that it's like if I find I've done like three or four projects back to back where it just isn't me it isn't what the kind of things that I want to be doing I can just go and make these photographs and make I guess yeah. this art in a way that mm -hmm. is uh, what I'm more about as a, as a cinematographer, as an artist in general, yeah. or whatever, yeah. yeah. And uh, Catherine, you've been shooting film photography, 35 millimeter film, Yeah, right? uh, Yeah, I mean, never professionally, always yeah. just sort of hobby, and I find that is nice and inspiring. I find, like, the question of what inspires me, or was that what we were saying? What yeah. was your question? <laughs> um, I, right now, am like, life. <laughs> like, I just want to, like, go out and, like, live some life or be away from the computer in my pocket yeah. and, like, not take that as the right. references. Yeah. I just, like, get so much inspiration from, like, sunlight, yeah. sitting somewhere, sure. watching some light. Um, but I do look at a lot of photos and stuff as well, too. Mm -hmm. I find photos more than video references, actually. Yeah. yeah. Often, yeah. I think it's the same thing. It, like, it's, something, it's like something that evokes a feeling. Do you For know? sure. And I think there's also that, that notion of like, you know, you look at a still image, you bring so much of yourself into how you read into it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. And I think that's kind of ultimately the best way to kind of create a kind of sentiment or mm -hmm. feeling or something. Yeah. I always find like I had there's a director that I work with in uh, LA bunch, and every time we did a project together, he would just give me the script and like a, a photo or like uh, a kind of like painter reference mm -hmm. and a mix CD. Mm -hmm. and that's the part. No, because he would just and he would just say, "Let's make it feel mm -hmm. like this." Oh, that's cool. And it was fucking awesome because I think I don't know. It's like I think actually music is can be yeah, some of the most inspiring shit. You know, I've yeah. had a director ask me to like listen to stuff on earbuds while operating. Oh, like that's an MLS yeah. Oh, are you kidding? That's very really? cool. Yeah. yeah. Really cool. Oh, wait, who was that? Well, it's my friend sounds... Travis, and we did like an indie film like oh, my um, God, that sounds... eight or nine years ago. That together. sounds amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It was like. Yeah, it was, it was very Do you remember cool. what the song was? It was, um, <laughs> I'll remember it. Sorry. <laughs> it's cool because I feel like actors do that a lot. Yeah. Like actors on South Well, there was, there was a director yeah. I worked with in Montreal that he literally, he wouldn't talk to him. He just walked around. This was like before iPods. He had a fucking Discman. <laughs> <laughs> he was walking around. This, like, we were, it was just like, we were just shooting like a commercial. But he was like listening to music the entire time as like oh. a way to kind of like, I guess, keep his headspace and like. It's so important to like, well, music evokes more feeling oh God. for me than yeah, um, sure. images do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not a musician, so I chose film instead. <laughs> but, like, I think it's so nice to draw from other art forms. Yeah. yeah. And how much work do you guys do in terms of finding inspiration, and in, uh, in, in how much of that do you bring into your pre-production process? Do you do pre-vis? Do you uh, offer directors, regardless of what you're doing, certain images? Or did you let the directors yeah. call the shots? What's Definitely offer tons of photos. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing early on is establishing yeah. the look, establishing the, the direction that you're going to take it. Do and you, the more photos you can give to people, yeah. the, the more that becomes clear and the more focused. Make you, sure you're you, on the same page. Even oh, exactly. Too. Yeah. Do you ever exactly. do that yeah. in like the interview process, yes. though? Yes. Sometimes. See, because it it's, it's interesting. It's like I, I used to do that, and then I kind of was like, oh, you know what? Like, and, 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 Why'd you stop? Well, because I was kind of like, what and and it's not as dogmatic as this, but I was like kind of like, what right do I have to say your movie should look like this if right. you've been writing it for but the last five years? But it's how you phrase it, though. It's like yeah, no, 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 for sure. You're totally yeah. right. You're totally yeah. right. But I guess I kind of like in, in the last like three, four years, whenever I interview for anything, it's not about like it should look like this or it mm -hmm. should be this. It's more kind of exactly the what you said. It's Most like it's just the conversation. And I just like to ask them like, how did you see this? How I also you, how don't want to bring feeling? a bunch of stuff to something before I've had a conversation with yeah. them. Yeah. No, for it, sure. It, it, you're just like, you totally missed the mark. Yeah. 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 I usually like no, prep you're, you're it totally and have right a folder of it. I've done it once or twice. I don't do it every time. Sometimes I'm like, I'm going to see what they bring to the table, make sure it suits me as yeah. well. Sure, you of know? course. Yeah. And then other times where I'm like, I really have a strong vision for this and I want it, so I'm hoping this yeah. is what they're but going I mean, for. But you know what? Sure sometimes, yeah. sometimes you take that chance. Yeah. And but you take it a just, chance. But, it, but, it, but, it, but it, it banks, though. Do you know what I mean? But if you're wrong, mm -hmm. chances are you get the job and it'll be a horrible experience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't want it anyway. That's, That's right, yeah, exactly, you know? yeah. And then you're, then you're just like, you're never going to agree on stuff. You're probably going to go home feeling like you compromised yeah. or they will. Yeah. I think it's important to talk about it really early on. But Definitely. even but even that, it's like you can have as many conversations as you want, but there's also like, again, what you're saying about like, kind of like, 
photo kind of reference for everything. It's like words can only say so much that pictures can't. It's true. Yeah. I mean, you can describe the same thing in like five different ways. Yeah, or, and, and, or bo and both be like, oh, yeah, we're, we're really yeah. on the same page, and then you get yeah. to set, and you're just it's like, this isn't at all what I was yeah. Yeah. It's crazy, because yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you can love the same movie for totally different reasons, it's so, so it's not enough to just be like, it That's needs to look like yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's yeah. so true. Yeah. And even just little elements of photos. So I'll bring in a photo and be like, I like just this part of it only, or the way yeah. that the light is there, the color of this, or the, the composition, or whatever. Do you ever get directors that show you like um, a bunch of references, but they don't make sense? There's no cohesive kind of yeah. like quality. And you're like, what do you like about this? But I guess that's also part of our job, exactly. is like deciphering yeah. the director's brain that's a little right. bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> unscrambling it and making it into something cohesive, I yeah. think, yeah. for sure, yeah. I find my biggest prep thing these days on a narrative thing, and it's interesting because I just read this Ellen Curris interview, and she said the same thing, and I was like, yes. <laughs> um, it is like having, especially if it's a long format project, like having a couple days with the director where I don't even talk about anything visual. It's just talking about the script and like the emotion behind the script yeah. and the mm -hmm. feeling behind every scene and the intention because they it may seem so obvious to them in that script that they've written, yeah. but like I want them to outside. like yeah. Yeah. Right, but, but tell me I mean, everything absolutely. about it. Isn't that the yeah. best part of prep though? Is like sitting down and like asking the director, okay, what's like what's the intention of the scene? Like how do you how how should it feel? Like Definitely. how look, how should it feel? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And then you like I just hope and this is like the like hippie in me where I'm just like <laughs> it's all seeping in there. And so then when I'm on yeah. set and anything goes wrong, yeah. it's you like it's there. Yeah, it's right. somewhere yeah. in I there. Talking, I was talking to Marty about this earlier where it's like if you do the legwork to really understand the script and the story and you and the director are really on the same page. You could take a scene that was scripted as a day exterior, mm -hmm. and now you're doing a night interior, mm -hmm. and you know exactly how to shoot it, even if that change happened in five minutes. Right. Sure. And yeah. you're just like, okay, this is the location, this, 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 and this, and that's that's the feeling we're going to capture. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. It's true. I mean? Yeah. And I think yeah. there's something so. I think I. I mean. I don't know if it was the same for, for all of you, but I, when I was starting out, I really felt this need to impose a look on something so that people knew there was like the hand of a DP, do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the older I get, the more I'm interested in making that work kind of just like wallpaper. Yeah, yeah. I, like, yeah. I, I personally, it's not like cool to say, but yeah, no, totally, I like, yeah. I like to stand back. I yeah. like to let like, like a film's nothing without its performances, and I really believe that. It's, it's a cliche, but it's true, yeah. so I just like to support it, you know? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure about cinematography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they wouldn't be films yeah. without our job, but yeah, like, it's I, true, was, but I just, I, but I just... Saying, how, how, many times, how many times have you watched a movie that you were just like, wow, what the fuck, that's such a piece of shit, but cinematography so it looks so great. good, yeah. But, but you're also just like, but who cares? Yeah. It's like, you don't want to sit a small... through a beautiful movie that's awful. Yeah, I almost feel manipulated yeah. in those situations. Yeah. Or it's, it's like true. you're trying to wrap something that was kind of garbage up in something really yeah. pretty. It's you true. Know? They're so sick important. on a pig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because, you know, we everyone points to Roger Deakins is always saying, if no one notices what I've done, I've done my job right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, his films are often used as a mm -hmm. study. Like Jesse James is basically a study in cinematography, right? Yeah. Uh, and so there's this weird d dichotomy and this inverse relationship between uh, doing your job because you're creating a, a new world, a, a world that doesn't really exist in real life, but at the same time, making people believe that it's real life. But I think what's, what's interesting with Roger Deakins, though, is like, yeah, his stuff is beautiful, but it's beautiful in the right way. That's you know right. I, mean? yeah. like, I'm sure I was going to say, like, Jesse James, that is such a good example, because it is so stylistic in a way, but all those choices were made for the story. Yeah, yeah. And they yeah. serve yeah. the That's purpose of the work, story yeah. and the emotional stuff, yeah. and not just, like, sure. these showy choices. Yeah, you know? yeah. Whereas, yeah. like, I'm sure you've all seen movies that it's like, you make very beautiful images that have nothing to do with like mm -hmm. the story. Yeah, yeah like, totally. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we only have a few moments left and I want to finish off by um, asking you guys a couple of quick questions. One is, um, in terms of your career trajectory, uh, was there, and this is often ha happens with a cinematographer who will just be picking up a 5D and kind of going about doing their thing and then they meet a director who has one really good idea, they shoot a music video, and now boom, the music video explodes and now they have an agent and their career is off. Others, they kind of pick away at it. Was there any watershed moments for you guys in your careers where it was just felt like the slog and then all of a sudden the levee broke? Or was it no, always just a little God. bit? <laughs> yeah. It'd be a terrible thing to happen to somebody, I feel I like, agree. honestly. It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I was just me. picking away for sure and slowly over time. Even mm -hmm. still, like every other project I do, I'm kind of like, Ah, this is good. I feel like I'm making progress, and then you know you don't work for a week or two, and you're like, God, why is anybody calling me? <laughs> Those <laughs> moments are important, though. They are, yeah. and I think so they're so important. Yeah. Definitely, it's true. And you recharge, and you get your yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. it gives you a bit of humility. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Most definitely, yeah. which is good. Yeah. I've never understood, like, I, I keep on hearing, like, stories just about really kind of just, like, arrogant DPs, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Which I think in mm -hmm. film in general, I think kind of creates an environment that fosters that type of attitude sometimes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whereas I feel, and I'm, I don't, I mean, not, I don't want to assume that you're like this because this is going to sound kind of like pretty self-deprecating, but it's like <laughs> I'm just the opposite where it's like I have like I have like low self-esteem. It's like no one's going to watch. You know what I mean? Where it's like I don't ever assume that anyone would want to work with me. Really? You know I mean? Yeah. Hmm. It's really weird. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I, it's a funny, it's funny thing. You but would never, it's funny. How, it's really cool hearing how people feel on these. I love these conversations yeah. Yeah. for this yeah. reason. Because like what we do is like we put all of our like feelings on a screen and we're and yeah. it's, a, it's a management position and you have to talk to people all the time yeah. and so. But I think yeah. I mean I don't know I like I like the idea of kind of just like you know things never have to be mutually exclusive yeah. like I like the idea that you can be confident while still having no self esteem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean having low like, self esteem yeah. kind like, of pushes um, you to yeah, always yeah, be yeah, doing yeah. better work, which but is kind like, of yeah, an important thing. I've like, you know, ever but. like heard Roger Deakins talk about how nervous he is before every single yeah. shoot where he's like he, I think he said this one thing once about like um the first shot of any movie he's on, he just glues himself to the eye cup um, and just only looks through the viewfinder because he's so nervous about not setting up the shot right and he doesn't feel comfortable with the crew yet or the people yeah. or anything. And it's just like, and he's just always scared he's gonna like fuck it up. And you're I just asked like, him a question on his forum oh, when I was like, his website. It's awesome. amazing. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Where does he find the time? I don't understand. Yeah. 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 And, and he like wrote back like publicly. He, yeah. he always writes back. Mm. And he do you think it's about, actually him, or do you think he has like like interns? I know his wife like, was also helping moderate. Yeah. but like it's it's very clear when it's in his voice yeah. when he writes back, and he just, he'll just sometimes like uh, I don't know if he does it anymore. This was like maybe almost ten years ago, but he would just like dive into conversations that were happening even like without him. <laughs> like, he's, he's really on there all the time. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> so yeah. cool. And, and he it, talked about like throwing up at the beginning of the day <laughs> and stuff like so candidly yeah. because I had asked him a question about not coming up through the ranks. Um, as like a camera assistant or an electric and a gaffer and just shooting mm -hmm. because it was in the beginning and I was kind of nervous. I was like, I want to keep shooting, but I don't know if this is the right thing because um, I don't know, the industry kind of tells you you're supposed to go through these channels, sure, yeah. appropriate channels. Yeah. And I'm, am, am I going to lose out on like not yeah. having the shorthand and the tricks up my sleeve and stuff? And so he would tell these stories about like feeling nauseous at the beginning of the day, <laughs> but having to just like push yeah. through yeah, yeah. and because he loved shooting, so well, it's kind of validating. He, I mean, he also had a documentary background also. Though, yeah, right? yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so that leads, I think, perfectly into our last question, which is that uh, there are a bunch of cinematographers that are giving back to the community and that they are, uh, it's no longer uh, the gatekeepers. They're holding back the information. There's a sharing economy now. Um, and you guys have obviously got a wealth of experience now behind you and you've obviously come, you know, you started as a gaffer in the electric department, right? And so everyone comes from it from a different angle and we're in a very different space now for filmmakers. Um, and so I want to leave uh, this conversation with uh, some of your ideas about your advice to beginning filmmakers right now and, and beginning cinematographers and what they can expect, what they should focus on, and what's important and what's not important. Ooh, you go, you go, Kathy. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think it, starting out, it's just important to to shoot stuff as much as you can. Shoot stuff for free. Shoot stuff on your own. Shoot photographs. Look at light. Look at compositions. Just do it as much as you possibly can. Um, and there is so many different ways that you can work your way up. I think that, like Maya said, it's not um, like it used to be. You can come kind of come in in ways if you're lucky. Um, as a shooter and work your way up that way. But the more time that you spend on your own learning the way that you know dynamic range works and composition works and color and what works in terms of you know textures and, and spending time alone with that and really learning it, um, I think is kind of the most important thing mm -hmm. probably. You know what's it's interesting because I think I kind of used to think the same thing. Yeah. And to answer that question now, I would basically flip it to almost the complete opposite of really? read books, listen to music, and just figure out aesthetically what interests you, right. even, even outside of film, because that's what's going to influence the kind of projects you want to work on. Yeah. And then, obviously, I think, you know, your answer, I think, holds a ton of weight. Sure. But I think that if you can inform that approach of kind of, and I think you should shoot anything you can. Sure. But I think if you can do that with a sense of specificity. Most definitely. It just, it helps create a path. Well, because we like, everybody has these same tools now. Yeah. And it is yeah, a lot yeah. easier to 
be a cinematographer yeah. now in terms of grabbing a 5D yeah. or whatever, but we only have our voices and yeah, our own true. personal it's, experience it's, and our. But it's weird. Person. Like, did yeah. you like? I I wish someone like when I was like 18 or 19 was like, what, what do you what do you like? Like, mm -hmm. do you like is there a painter you like? Is there a book you like? Is there and just like I just never had that question asked to me until I was like in my like mid late 20s. Interesting. And Did you I go to film school? I went to communications, then I went to, to American Film Institute, and at AFI, that's those mm. those questions were posed yeah. right. a lot. But I think in 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 a very specific kind of context, mm -hmm. it was. It was mostly that director I was telling you about that gave me the the kind of the mix CD and the script and like yeah. the photo reference. That's cool. That yeah. was kind of like, well, what do you like? Like, yeah. what inspires you these days? Like, here's what I'm into. What are you into? And I was like, oh, I never thought yeah. about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, but, ser but seriously, yeah. but I think it's one of those things. It's like I, I feel like I've only started to think in that capacity, like kind mm -hmm. of really recently. Yeah, that's interesting. Feels, that's really it, still, interesting. it still feels like a very nascent thing for right. me. Right. But I think like, doing the thing where you're. If, I tell, I actually do tell young filmmakers, especially these days, it's like get like a cheap little like DSLR just yeah. to sure. train your own eye and figure Most out what kind of way. texture you're into yeah. and stuff. And I think it's, it's you got to do that. Mm -hmm. But then it's also like a little bit of navel gazing, like an analyzing your own self yeah, and realizing totally. like, it's not just like this looks cool, but it's like why does it look Most cool? Definitely. Or well, and, but and also why are you responding? To yeah, that? for sure. You have to ask yeah. I also think just everyone should fucking read Andre Tarkovsky's sculpture. Oh yeah, just read, yes. that, just read that book. Yes. Like, even if you're too young to understand it, just read it and just you'll. Get I it think eventually. I read that when yeah. I was way too young to understand yeah, it. Yeah, same here. It's like, I just, you know what? I just, I just, uh, I just reread it like like three months ago. Yeah. And I was just like, oh my god, this. Like, you know what's so funny? Good, I yeah. bring it with me like whenever I travel for a job, thinking that I'm gonna like reread it, and I just travel around it so much. You leave it on like your bedside table like your hotel yeah. room. And you're just like, oh man, if anyone yeah. sees this, I think it's possible. That's your note. Yeah. You're going to just pictures of the book. Yeah. 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 Guys, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your knowledge today. We'll have to do this again. My best to you in the future. Thanks so much. Thank you.